My name is Matt Choi, and this is my story of my first 100 mile ultra marathon. Let's go! What made you decide to try your first 100 mile marathon? I wanted to do this first 100 miler because I wanted to stretch my own limits. And for a while, running was one of those things that I didn't love to do. And even giving you a quick story, like when I ran track in high school, I only ran the 100 and 200 meter dash. And I did it because I wanted to get faster for football. And my coach put me into a 400 meter time trial just to see if I could do that race or that event. And in my own mind, I quit before I even start. I ran 300 meters. And at 300, I literally stopped and I started to walk. I quit before I even started. And a lot of that was I was trying to prove to the coach that, hey, don't put me in this event. And I was almost being like, I didn't want to listen to what he was asking me to do. And it was one of those moments where I thought I was cool being dismissive from the coach, but I didn't realize what I was losing on that table. And I've realized years later, and as I've done these races now and I do these challenges now, like life is actually a mindset game. And if we go into events or if we go into challenges saying that I can't do this or with the quitter's mentality, you're never going to accomplish things. So when I think about ultra marathons or even just this 100 mile race, I really wanted to stretch my limitations and start to unlearn the things that I've put into my own mind. And it's truly opened up my perspective of what I can do as Matt Choi as a human, but also I'm hoping that along this journey, someone gets inspired and they realize that, damn, like I'm leaving things on the table. Like I can do more in this world, but I'm not a believer in it. And sometimes it's hard when no one else believes in you, but if you believe in yourself that you can accomplish something or that you're willing to at least try, I think that that's an awesome first step because with belief comes a lot of conviction. And with that, it starts to lead to great life skills, whether it's accountability, self-discipline, work ethic. And these are all things that you and I can control. Most people allow outer noises and external noises control their own inner voice. But I'm telling you right now, guys, like listen from someone who quit in an event that was only a minuscule part of a 100-mile race. You can honestly do anything, but you need to unlearn the limitations you have in your own mind. What was it like when you got to race day? What was the feelings you had? The feelings I had on race day were, you know, it was kind of like before a game. It's like that excited, nervous energy that, you know, you've kind of like, at that point, the training's done, preparation is done, you know, you know, nutrition packs and everything was set up to just go and execute. And I really felt a calming presence. And even as I looked through some of the B-roll clips, like. I felt like a good and positive energy just because one, I had friends that were out there that were also racing and I had a media crew and, and pacers and other runners that were there just to support me um, trying to accomplish this crazy feat. And it was, a, it was a level of like peace, just knowing that I did everything I could ahead of that to prepare myself to the best I could. And obviously, like I said, like anytime you're stepping into these races or these challenges or anytime you're stepping into the unknown, you never know if you're really ready or not. But I think having the mentality and the mindset that like, hey, I'm gonna attack this head on, you know, it starts to become a lot more enjoyable because at the end of the day, like, you know, most people don't get to do what I was about to achieve that day. So for me, there's a level of gratitude and, and, and perspective that was kind of going through my own mind of like, hey, even though this is gonna be a challenge, like there's some people out there that wish that they can just walk, let alone go run 100 miles. So I'm just like super, I was super grateful and excited and, and yet a little bit nervous too, just because at the end of the day, 50 miles was the furthest I ever ran. So thinking about doing a whole nother 50 miles after that race was something that really did push me and challenge me. But 
overall, I was super excited. They're going, but dude, this is what it is. Everyone's ready to camp out here for the next 38 hours. Um, but it's a vibe, bro. We're out here, Grindstone 100. This is my first attempt of doing a 100 mile ultra marathon. And we will see what unfolds over the next 38 hours. Um, I was telling Kev on my way up here, there's gonna be a moment in time for every single runner, every racer, every pacer that's out here that you're qu when, you, when you start to question why you're out here. And it could be a mile 30, it could be mile 65, it could be a mile 84, but there will be a moment in time where you ask yourself, why did I sign up for this race? And am I gonna finish it? And that feeling, that moment is what I'm looking for. I've been telling everyone that this is all about a feeling, pushing yourself past what you think is doable, what you think is possible, and we're about to find out. 30 hours is the goal. Under 30 hours is the goal. If it's 33, 34, I don't really care. Finishing this race is an accomplishment. Um, but other than that, dude, shout out to my guy Clark for holding this event, Grind Some 100. They didn't have it last year because of COVID. Shout out to Kev behind the screen, everyone else, crew, pacers, media, everyone else that's supporting this. For me, it's a blessing just to have people around. There's a saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, what was your previous training like before this? Have you ever ran this large of a distance? My previous training before this was a 50 mile ultra. That one was in Salt Lake City. It was a race called the Antelope Island Buffalo Run. And this was the first time I've ever experienced anything in the ultra running community. I actually had a friend of mine, Jason Hine, who kind of peer pressured me into running this uh, 50 mile race because he was also doing a 100 mile race at that time. And for me, 50 miles was a tough feat. You know, previously before that, I've ran a marathon before and I've also did the David Goggins four miles every four hours for 48 hour challenge. And I felt like that prepped me enough to one, be confident that I can complete 50 miles. I'm a firm believer that you know, in life, sometimes it's about entering the unknown. You know, whether it's a new job, whether it's a new fitness program, whatever it might be, sometimes you won't have the answers to every question or to all the goals that you want to achieve. Like no one has the answers to every step along that journey. But when you enter the unknown and when you're, when you're not afraid of the unknown, you come up with a curious mindset, with an open mindset that, hey, you're gonna figure it out along the way. If you go into anything in life with the I'm not gonna quit mentality, you can get a lot of things done and you can achieve a lot of success and fulfillment through your life. I'm a firm believer that most people don't even give themselves a chance or an opportunity to go into that unknown feeling because they, they sell themselves short mentally. Most people won't ever run a marathon or sign up for a half marathon or, or an ultra because they've told themselves that that's not them. They've told themselves that I can't do that or someone else has put that idea or mentality inside their head. Once you realize that life actually happens in between your own ears and that you're in full control of what you want to do in life, life becomes very, very fun and enjoyable because you get to design the life that you want to live. Most people are still living in the matrix and they're living life based on what everyone else is telling them and what their parents are telling them or society or whatever it might be. And I'm just a firm believer and I want anyone that's watching this video, like understand that you are in full control. Whether you achieve something or not, that's on you. And if you come into that with that mentality, you can achieve a lot of extraordinary things and you don't have to be a superhuman. And this is the best piece of advice I would give anyone out there that might consider running a race or an ultra is run your race and just let that be your race. And even though you might have friends or people that you're there with, like understand that at the end of the day, like anytime you sign up for one of these uh, races or challenges, like you're in a race against yourself. And if you go in with that mentality, like 
you know, whether someone's faster than you or someone's slower than you, you just know that you're gonna be fighting your own battles and demons. And even though the first 30 miles, like they didn't go perfectly. I had two walking poles, walking treks, and I actually had to give one of them to Tuan because he actually did not bring his because he was gonna wait till like mile 50 or 60. So now I've basically proceeded to run this ultra marathon with one trekking pole, which ultimately leads a lot of muscle um, imbalances because if you think about using one uh, hiking trek, you basically are like over leveraging one side. And it actually led to me dealing with a knee injury towards the latter part of the race, which kind of debilitated me for about 15 or 20 miles. But the first 15 and 30 miles like was pretty smooth sailing. I had my plan set up where it was gonna take me about 16 or 17 minutes per mile. And I was gonna rest at the, each of the aid stations for about 10 or 12 minutes. So basically everything I wrote up in my game plan, I was hitting on the T. But obviously in a race like this, like there's a lot of variables. Things are gonna happen where you're gonna be slower, faster, and in those moments is really where the fun happens. 36 miles, I feel, I feel pretty good. This next loop is gonna be a, it's a challenge. I think overall, like my legs have been feeling pretty good. Um, just having some slight cramping, but I've done a really good job eating, bro. At what, what often points were you eating? Yeah, I mean, nutrition during the run, um, I typically eat 300 calories per hour because right around someone that's my size, 190 pounds, 6'2", um, especially when you're sweating that much, you're probably burning two to 400 calories based on your, each individual is gonna be a little different. So I wanted to make sure that I was consuming those calories back into my system. And whether it was in a form of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, gel packs, goo packs, stinger waffles, cliff bars, um, anything that I can just get quick, uh, quick calories in my system was a big help. And in terms of actual hydration, I use a product called Tailwind, which is basically an electrolyte drink. And it's an all-in-one formula where it has electrolytes, it has sodiums, and it has carbohydrates. And even with just that drink, you can almost run 50 miles with just Tailwind and no real food, which some people have done. But I would have two 24-ounce bottles in my running pack, one with water, one with Tailwind, and I would just continue to refill them up at each, each aid station. I'm eating about 300 calories an hour. Um, any chance I get, anytime I'm hiking, I'm just trying to grub, whether it's waffles, Stinger waffles, Doritos, Cheez-Its, um, Goose, Tailwind, water. Um, I think the biggest thing that's helped me right now is that I'm actually holding a really good hiking pace. Like when I'm hiking, I'm just hiking. I'm not worried about jogging in between. And I'm passing a lot of people as I hike. Um, and then I'm able to just, I save my legs when it's a good time to jog. I just hold a jog for a couple miles and I just rock out. But honestly, I feel pretty good. I think when, I mean, it's almost three o'clock right now. I'm gonna get more energy as the sun comes up. I'm just trying to maximize the nighttime right now. Um, when Mark hops in at 51, sun will be coming up. I think it'll just, it, I'll just get natural energy and obviously having a pacer with me, but um, I'm feeling solid for where I'm at right now at mile 36, dog. I feel, I feel pretty good. I think I'm, I've got a, good system right now with nutrition, good system with hiking, jogging in between. So look, it's a long, it's a long race now. Let me, let me not get too eager at mile 36 because I might be saying something different at mile, 50. at mile 50, at mile 60, <laughs> 70 something. But um, it's dope though. There's so many dope people, dope volunteers. Um, it's always dope when you're walking and you're just like, when you're walking near people, it's always awesome having good conversation. Like people are just out. This is an actual ultra marathon, not a marathon. Life ain't a marathon, life's an ultra marathon. <laughs> what was the toughest part of the race? The toughest part of the race was right after the halfway point. I felt pretty good and like, if you don't know about ultras, like most times in an ultra marathon, especially a hundred miler, you're allowed to have a pacer at the halfway point. So obviously this is a hundred mile race at mile 50 my friend Mark Green was able to hop in as a pacer. And when I first met Mark, like, there was obviously a level of excitement. I just made it through halfway. And at that point, every single step was a new PR for me. Um, obviously, you know, 50 miles being the furthest I ever ran previously before this race. But being in the daylight, having the sun hitting, as well as having a pacer and a friend kind of running with you, it gave me a ton of energy. But slowly, as we kept going past the halfway point, around mile 58, um, I started having a lot of knee pain. And what was happening is that I, I think I had a IT band syndrome, which basically is when the glute, the glute med is not activating and firing properly. Um, it starts to create this pain towards the side of your leg and into your knee. And at this point, 
it was like mile 60 and the next checkpoint was about six miles away. And I just, I couldn't run anymore. It was really frustrating not being able to run because it wasn't like I was out of breath, but it was just my, it was a pain in my knee where walking caused zero pain. But anytime I would jog and put more pressure on that leg, it just would be excruciating and it would be right in my kneecap where I almost felt like I couldn't bear weight on that leg. So for about six or seven miles, man, I was like in like a, I was just in a bad headspace because one, we were going downhill and this was like a seven mile downhill climb, like downhill run where a lot of times this is an opportunity in, a, in an ultra where you're able to actually catch up on time. I felt like I left something on the table by not being able to like run or at least jog down that hill. And it was kind of frustrating just having to like walk and kind of, you know, almost reconfigure my system. And obviously Mark was there with me and, you know, he's also trying to like keep my spirit high, but it's one of those moments where you're almost fighting your own head. And it gets frustrating because you want to move and you want to keep on pace and, and, and all those things. But at the end of the day, like you got to listen to your body. And if it's telling you something, understand that that feedback is information. And obviously you can fight past that information and fight, fight past that feedback. But in a race like this, it truly is, life truly is an ultra marathon. It's not a marathon because you could feel good at 60, you could feel bad at 60, but you still have 40 more miles to go. And in my head, in that moment, as much pain and frustration I was going through, I just knew that I wasn't gonna quit. So I had that fight in me regardless. Like, like I said, if you go into life or into anything with an I'm not gonna quit mentality, you can achieve almost anything. What's your motivation? Like I know this is your first finger, but what's your motivation for this? I think just in general, most people don't step out of their comfort zone and, and do hard ass shit. Yeah. Excuse my language. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. I don't know there's a there's a story when I was in high school, I, I played college football. Oh wow. Cool. So like football was a big like part of my life. Yeah. I ran track one year and I, I my coach wanted me to run the 400 meter dash. And I didn't want to run it just because like I only wanted to run the 100 and 200. So I literally ran 300 meters and I stopped. One to just like tell, show him that I don't want to run that event. Yeah. But then I realized that like I was just, I made a decision myself that I wanted to just quit on it. Yeah. And now I kind of fast forward and I started getting into running because of COVID and I started just running a mile. And I just, I didn't ran a half marathon, full marathon and I did my first 50. And now I'm just like, what other areas of my life am I not maxing out on? Yeah. And this is just one place where I'm not comfortable running. Like there's so many great runners out here, you know? I'm like for me it's like it's awesome just to be in an environment like this cuz it's humbling for me cuz I'm not like I'm not the star in the sense, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um but then you know in other aspects of my life I try to do the same aspect, you know, and try to be the best version of myself, yourself, you know? Yeah. And so it's been a it's been a fun journey and this has been an awesome That's event. Awesome. At that point of that IT man situation, was there any point that you wanted to quit or stop? There was zero doubt in my mind, zero. Like I did not want to quit. I knew I was going to finish. And it's actually funny. Someone came up to me after that aid station, mile 65, someone actually came up to me. He said, dude, he said, are you dropping out? I said, what? He said, you're taking a while at this aid station. Like, are you going to drop out? I said, I was like, no, I mean, there's like, there's no doubt in my mind. I'm, I'm going to finish. I was like, I will walk this race till the finish line and I will finish this race. And it was interesting because in that moment, he obviously saw that I was in pain and um, I was lingering at this aid station for like 15 or 20 minutes. And most people stay only like 10 minutes or so. But even though I was dealing with that pain and, and mentally I was frustrated with my body not responding the way I wanted it to, I had zero quit in my mind. I knew for a fact that I told my guys that were out there like, hey, like if I have to crawl to the finish line, I will. And I think it's a great lesson in life. Like whether it's a business thing or a relationship thing, whatever it is, like you truly can do anything if you have the right mindset. And that was just one of those moments where it honestly tested me as well because pain is one thing. And you know, having a level of will and a want to is a different thing, but some people can't fight past that initial feeling of the pain. But obviously it would have hurt me way more if I quit at mile 65 sitting here saying like, hey, I, I got through 65 miles, but you know, because of this injury, I wasn't able to fight through it or battle through it. But I think when you go into a race like this, like that's kind of what you're signing up for. Did you sleep at any point of this race? I did not sleep at all during this race. And some people do when they do ultra marathons, whether it's a couple minutes, couple, you know, 20, 10, 15, I don't know, five. Um, I didn't sleep at all. And I just kind of power hiked through all of the night. What running shoes did you wear for this race? 
I wore the Hoka Speed Goat Force, and this is a max cushion trail running shoe. Hoka obviously makes a lot of shoes with a ton of cushion, and anytime you're gonna be on an adventure <laughs> on your feet for this long, you wanna find something that's gonna, one, give you stability, give you some cushion, um, but something that's gonna last for a long time. And I trained in the Hoka Speed Goats, and I was a big fan of them, and there was a couple other shoes that I was testing throughout my process of training for this race, but I found that the Hokas were really comfortable and it worked well for my feet, and I actually did not change shoes for the whole 100 miles. Um, I only changed my socks at the halfway point. Damn. Right, we, we didn't get something before. 13 more miles. Mm -hmm. miles. Mm -hmm. 13 more miles. Mm -hmm. No, I might need you to cop that. I'm only going to stay here for 10 minutes. Be ready for this decline. Thank you guys so much. Yes. Bro, you guys are killing it, man. Go get it, dude. Woo! Woo! Let's go! How long did this 100 mile race take you? The Grindstone 100 took me 29 hours, 24 minutes, and five seconds. What did it feel like to see the finish line and knowing that once you cross that line, that that was it, that was the finish of your 100 mile? What, did, what, what, what experiences or what feelings were you getting from that at that moment? Wow. Um, the feeling of seeing the finish line was one of the most unreal experiences because it's insane how you almost lose track of where you even are because obviously at that point it's been 28 hours since I've seen that start line, also the finish line. And all I could hear was the music playing because they had a DJ and the music was super loud and all I could think of was like, go run to the sound. Because at this point it was about 10.30 at nighttime because I wanted to finish before midnight and I could just hear the music playing and at that point I couldn't see the finish line yet but I knew I was within half a mile distance and as soon as I started to cross and get into the actual camp Shenandoah I saw where the finish line was and it just it put a smile on my face because I knew that I had come along this journey not knowing how I would be feeling or or, or what I would be going through in that sense but I told my my crew and my pacers that I was with that Regardless of how I feel, I'm gonna be sprinting through that finish line. Bro, I'm, I'm gonna sprint shit. the last mile. Said it. So you might be leaving me at last shit. I'm gonna run through guys so, like this. <laughs> because if you do anything, you might as well go hard with it, especially all the way till the end. And the funniest thing was, I might have had one of the funniest endings of a race because I actually sprinted through the line and I did this uh, airplane. Um, celebration where you're kind of spreading your uh, arms out kind of like a plane and because it was pitch dark I actually tripped over a rock and I like tripped into the finish line and like I was like yelling and celebrating and screaming like that I had just finished it and like people were at the finish line also just kind of celebrating and cheering me on and um, it's it was awesome to celebrate that moment with not just myself but the race director the supporters my crew um, because at the end of the day when you do an ultra you know, you are on the road and you're out there by yourself, but the people that help you along the journey, volunteers, your crew, your pacers, like that's what makes the race. And in that moment, being able to share it at that end was an amazing thing because most people kind of just like, they just trot into the finish. And I just, I don't know, I wanted, to, I wanted to go out with a bang and like, even though I tripped in, it was an amazing moment. I would love to thank my pacers, Mark Green, Darnell Leslie, um, everyone on the media crew at Marathon, Kevin Kim, Gary G, you guys held it down. And then obviously, Sean, Emma, Jason, um, you guys just kind of seeing your face and familiar faces, it's always a pleasure um, having friends in this race like that with you. And then obviously one of my good friends, Tuan and his whole media crew, um, it was super fun just training with Tuan, training with Mark, um, for all of us to experience this first 100 mile race. Would you do it again? And if so, when would be the next time you do something like this again? 100%. I will do another 100 mile ultra marathon. And actually, after leaving and after completing this one, I had a goal where I want to do one of these every single year. I want to prove to myself that that wasn't just a one-time thing, that that wasn't just a one-off, that 
Every single year, there's an opportunity to push yourself and challenge yourself and until my limbs don't allow me to do it anymore. And the good thing about running and ultra running is that it's one of those sports where you actually get better as you age. It's kind of like fine wine. There's not many things in this world where you actually improve as you age, but ultra running, if you look at the average age of runners, are 40 to 55 years old. And it's men or women that have been through a lot of experiences and they've built this grit and this aerobic base that they're able to just go out there and run miles and miles and miles. So to answer your question, this will not be my last 100 mile ultra marathon. What would be your advice to new ultra runners or someone who would want to start a 100 mile race? My advice for any new ultra runners or anyone that wants to tackle a challenge like this is to one, be patient with this process, but at the same time, be very curious about what you can do. And I think when you are able to balance the both of those things, being patient and understand that if you haven't ran a mile in three, four, five years, that hey, you need to start with one mile before you can look at 100. You need to probably look at five miles before you look at 50. And just understand that in that process of being patient, work really hard at what you can control. Your actions, what you put in your body, how you talk to yourself, how you train, all those things that are in your control, do your best to manage and, and control those things. On the other end of the spectrum, have that level of curiosity of what are you not fully maximizing and what can you really do if you put your full energy and passion into. And it's one of those things where I tell everyone, maybe it's not 100 miles, but for someone out there, it could be 10 miles. It could be a half marathon or a 5K or 10K, and maybe that is your peak right now. But understand that once you accomplish those things, you're gonna have that what if mentality of like, what if I do 20? What if I do 30, 40, 50? When you enter the unknown, understand that like, your potential is limitless as long as you understand and believe that. And if you believe that in between your own ears, I truly believe that you can accomplish anything that you put your mind, body, and spirit to.